he came to see me looking very bad, you know, with very dirty, etc., etc. In a way, what he said to me there, he had this outburst of anger about everything, you know. Everybody tells me I'm great, but I'm broke. Why? Um, and in a way, it was really a manifestation in a conversation of the lyrics of Hanging on a Star. You know, it's like, if you deem me so high, why am I so low? You know, what, what is the story? Well, I don't understand it. Everybody says I'm a genius, and I don't have any money, and I you know, don't have a career, and it's all a mess. I mean, you have to remember that although I saw Nick occasionally socially, mainly I saw him when, when he had an album to promote. So by the time the last last album came out, the last one of the three um, albums, and then he was seriously withdrawn, and um, yeah, it was it was actually quite dramatic. When I mean, everyone will tell you this, everyone that saw him then will tell you this. It was a dramatic departure from the Nick that we knew. You know, he didn't speak much. The odd muttered word. Um, he had a quite a down appearance, you know. Um, his sister once said that the pictures done on Hampstead Heath, which was this particular album, were the most honest she's seen. I'm not sure I buy that entirely, but I know what she means. You know, it did reflect what he was like at that time. Um, you will meet people or talk to people that tell you he was depressed at other times. But you know, I was there at other, other times, other you know, other session times, and, and nothing was quite like that final session. You know, I mean, it was whereas before you bounced ideas and you talked and you made things work, there you just basically sat or stood, and, and I ran around, and eventually I ran out of things to say. I just clicked. It was almost like doing a still life. I always say that Nick was born with a skin too few, but I think it's actually perhaps better summed up by a poem that my mother wrote. And it's a poem that's called The Shell, which goes, Living grows round us like a skin to shut away the outer desolation. For if we clearly mark the furthest deep, we should be dead long years before the grave. But turning around within the homely shell of worry, discontent, and narrow joy, we grow and flourish and rarely see the outside dark that would confound our eyes. Some break the shell. I think that there are those who push their fingers through the brittle walls and make a hole, and through this cruel slit, stare out across the cinders of the world with naked eyes. They look both out and in, knowing themselves and too much else beside. John Wood and I did the final recording session. He was so in such a state, you know, that he couldn't sing and play the guitar at the same time. Those last four tracks, you know, the Black Eyed Dog and all those are recorded with a guitar and then voice singing over the guitar because he was just too nervous or too, I don't know, I don't know how to describe the way he was, but it was very, very agonizing seeing him try to do those recordings. I mean, they're extraordinary recordings, but they were the combination of the, 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 the lyric and the music and, and the state of Nick at the time of doing it was very um, distressing experience. And why do you leave me hanging on a star When you deem me so high When you deem me so high When you deem me
and wine leave me sailing in the sea when you hear me so clear when you hear me so clear when you hear me He went up to bed rather early. I remember him standing at that door and I said, are you off to bed, Nick? I can just see him now. And apparently he'd been down during the night, been downstairs during the night and uh, heard some cornflakes or something like that. And he often did that, as a matter of fact, and he, 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 when he couldn't sleep. More often than not, Molly would hear him Goodness knows how many nights this happened. She would hear him passing our bedroom door and she'd get up, put her dressing gown on, go down and talk to him. This occasion she didn't hear him. Mm. But he'd obviously had been down. And then he went back and he took this extra strong dose of these uh, pills that had been prescribed for him called uh, triptazole, which he thought were antidepressants. He told us he was, he, he was supposed to be taking three a day or something. Well, they were prescribed you, by... We were always worried about Nick being so depressed, and one used to hide away the aspirin and the sleeping pills and things like that. These particular things we didn't uh, think were in any way dangerous. That was it, and the next morning, he often didn't get up at all early. He sometimes had a very bad night, and I never used to disturb him at all, but it was about, as it says here, it was about 12 o'clock, and, and I went in, because really it, it seemed, you know, that it was time he got up, and he was lying across the bed. And I, the first thing I saw was his long, long legs. <laughs> 